the last few weeks that the Dallas Stars have had have been much better than the start of the season. They started at 1-7-1, and now they're 7-8-1 and as I'm recording this. Things look better. But Jamie Benn's offense has really kind of fallen by the wayside, and it's a very complicated situation which ensures he's not going anywhere no matter what happens from here, and this is where we can have that conversation again about whether you pay guys for what they're going to do, whether you pay them for what they're doing, or you pay them for what they've done. Most of us can agree paying veteran players in their 30s for what they did before, it, it now looks foolhardy, and I think we're going to see fewer and fewer guys in their 30s getting those big long-term rich contracts, which used to be the norm. It used to be the norm. Yeah, a guy makes $5 million a year, and he's kind of done, but yeah, he's been a hero for a long time and makes sense. Mostly, that was before the cap era. So Jamie Benz drafted 129th overall in 2007, and any time that you watch a game that involves the Dallas Stars, they will mention Jamie Benn being drafted in the fifth round. And how this is proof that no matter where you draft, it's it's who you draft. And you can draft a star. Look, uh, Jamie Benn, the Dallas star, is is amazing and excellent and all that wonderful stuff. Um, and when he came into the league in 2009-2010, he lived up to the hype. 82 games, 22 goals, 19 assists, 41 points. He finished 7th in Calder voting that year. But he was kind of an under-the-radar star because he played in Dallas. And Dallas... Doesn't get a lot of attention. Never really has. You know, outside of 99 when they win the Stanley Cup, and there was some negative attention about that Cup win. Uh, you know, they really don't get a lot of attention. 2010, 2011, 69 games played, 22 goals, 34 assists, 56 points. And, boy, I, I love Jamie Benn at that point, and a lot of people didn't know who he was. And there was a lot of, yeah, I guess he's okay. Yeah, I've seen him. He's pretty good, I guess. Not a lot of talk about how good he really was. 2011-2012, he plays 71 games, 26 goals, 27 or 37 assists, 63 points. And honestly, some of the best hockey he played is during those first few seasons when people didn't really know who he was. They weren't really paying much attention. 2012-2013, uh, lockout shortened season, 41 games played, 12 goals, 21 assists, 33 points. So again, he just continues to plug along. About a 20-goal pace, which is about fine. That's about normal. But he would come through big after that. 2013-2014, 81 games played, 34 goals, 45 assists, 79 points. Where Jamie Benn benefits from being a left winger, uh, it can be easier to be uh, an NHL all-star at left wing than at right wing. So he was a first-team all-star left winger that year. Uh, he was 8th in points in the National Hockey League and ninth in goals. And suddenly everybody loved Jamie Benn. And oh look, he was drafted the 5th round. What a miracle. And I being a Dallas fan was like, okay, if people are finally figuring out what I know about Jamie Benn. This guy is awesome. 2014-2015, uh, plays 82 games, 35 goals, 52 assists, 87 points. He's a second team All-Star that year because there's this guy named McGillney that had 53 goals. And he had the Art Ross Trophy. And it was the lowest points total needed for an Art Ross Trophy for a long time. And for Penguin fans get in here, yeah. Uh, Sid the Kid was there, and he played five less games. And if Sid had played the other five games, odds are he would have beaten Ben. Uh, but he didn't. It didn't happen. Uh, now, Ben was first in points, Art Ross leader. Ninth in goals again with that 35 goals. And this, again, is a period where we're not seeing a lot of goals being scored in general. So that 87 points became this flashpoint where people are like, oh, offense is dying off. And look at this. It only took 87 points to lead the league in points. And what's going on? You know, is the, is the time of the 100 point scorer dead? Nope. Just it slept for a little bit there. 2015-2016. Uh, he actually might have had a better year in 2015-2016. Uh, 82 games, 41 goals, 48 assists, 89 points. He's a first team all-star that year. He was third in heart voting. And this was his best year, but he didn't win the Art Ross because scoring went back up, at least among the top guys, and he ends up finishing second in points and third in goals. But what happens is, around this time, people go, hey, he's a premier goal scorer, he's third in the league in goals, he's been first or second in points the last two years, and this is kind of where a lot of the numbers for over five-year period, he was ranked here, he was ranked here, this is where a lot of that comes from. And... Then he signed a, an eight-year extension on July 15, 2016 that actually kicked in in 2017. 
So before the 2016-2017 season, he's saying, I want to commit to the Dallas Stars long term. I'm going to be here nine more years. And for Dallas fans, sounds pretty good to them. Uh, the first year uh, after signing the contract, before the contract kicks in, he plays 77 games, 26 goals, 43 assists, 69 points. The points are still okay, and the assists are about the same. The goals total dropping to 26 was kind of alarming at the time, but eh, it's fine. 2017-2018, uh, the year the extension kicks in, 82 games, 36 goals, 43 assists, 79 points. Now, this was where I started getting kind of irritated. It's kind of on the channel that when you look at this five-year period, everything looks great. To me, he was trending down from these two seasons. I didn't see him ever getting back to that. Um, I felt like, you know, 79 points is still pretty respectable. I don't think he's ever going to score in the 85 to 90 range again. And I didn't think that was that was really who he was. That being said, last season, played 78 games, 27 goals, 26 assists, 53 points. An alarming downturn in his numbers, and it is a downturn where he has the lowest point totals he has had since his rookie season, if you don't include the lockout shortened season. And I don't really include that because it's only a 48-game season. You can't expect him to have 50 four points in 48 games so we'll just take that season and, and and shuffle it off to the side and say this was his his worst season offensively since his rookie year of 09 10. now jamie ben going into this season my expectation for him was still kind of kind of low offensively but so far he's played 16 games i'm saying so far one goal five assists six points there's virtually no chance he gets to that 69 to 70 or 79 range right now. Uh, he could score a point a game from here. It is possible, but it's not probable when you look at the overall numbers. He's 30 years of age, and he's been frustrated with his... He's had the chances, and there are those, and I saw last week an article on, oh, don't panic, the offense is coming. Don't drop him out of your fantasy league just yet. The offense is coming. But if you look at the last season and now a, a, a fifth of a season, right? He's got 59 points in 94 games. He still generates opportunities. He's still an excellent forward. The problem they have is his cap hit is $9.5 million until 2025. So let's just say that that at the age of 30, he has a, a, a bit of a comeback here. He kicks it up to 60 points. Let's just say he gets 54 points in 60 games the rest of the year, something along those lines. And he makes his numbers respectable. And people want to come back to this video and go, ha, see, you're wrong. Well, it's not that. It's that when he got signed to the extension here, he was paid $9.5 million, which is what was expected here. He's never going to be worth the $9.5 million. We see guys getting getting grilled all the time for making $6 million, $7 million and not producing. Well, for $9.5 million, six points in 16 games is alarming. Just to put that into perspective, he's got five more years left at $9.5 million. Now, people want to talk about Marner. Marner's making, what, $10.9 million, so a million and a half more. He's scoring about a point a game, and he's getting grilled for how much he's scoring for how much he makes. Jamie Benn doesn't. So, and I think this is part of the media idea as well, which is, well, Jamie Benn's earned his money. Because of what he did here... He has earned the right to that money until 2025. And if you're looking at it and going, well, Dallas could just buy him out at some point, so it's fine. No, they can't. $56 million in this contract is bonus money. Tons and tons of bonus money. Toronto-level bonus money in this one. And signed before Dubas started signing contracts, so who knew? Um, maybe it didn't start with Toronto. Maybe they just took it to that next level. Uh, if they bought him out, let's just say they bought him out, for the next five years, they would save $666,667 under the cap. And then they get a penalty where they'd be, you know, have the cap penalty of another $333,333 $333, for five more years after that. You can't buy him out. And then the other issue that happens is if his offense erodes further, you, you can't move that contract either without eating i would say at least half the cap and the thing is that in this day and age we can still look at jamie ben and go well he's an effective player and he is is he overpaid oh absolutely 
Is he getting frustrated with it? Absolutely. But we're still five years out from his contract being done. And again, you know, I've talked about, you know, certain contracts for young kids and going, yeah, he hasn't proven anything yet, which I still stand by that. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of paying a guy big money when he hasn't done it yet and you haven't seen him do it yet. But in this case, here's a guy who's getting paid in his mid-20s, signs an eight-year extension. And again, he's, what, 26 when he signs this extension? It looks looks pretty good that he's going to be worth it. But already at age 30, we're seeing that drop in points not everybody's Alex Ovechkin not everybody's Justin Williams not everybody at the age of 30 and beyond is able to produce like they did in their mid-20s so in 761 career games he's got 282 goals 373 assists 655 points and if you're Jim Nill the elephant in the room might be how how do we deal with this so if if Ben's offense continues to erode how do they deal with that because with the amount of cap space that he's eating up, it, it gets kind of tricky. You have to navigate around how much money he makes. You have to you have to put that into everything. And again, we we grill a lot of GMs for deals that get signed that are really expensive. And sometimes there's contracts that slip by the wayside or people don't talk about it. People don't talk about how, oh, he's, he's scoring how much and he's getting paid how much? Oh, what a bum. And... I don't say that about Jamie Benn, and I don't think people should be. But at the same time, if we're going to talk about contracts to Louis Erickson, we're going to talk about Milan Lucic. Well, Erickson expires in three years, and Lucic expires in four. This one's for five, and it's for more money. And again, at the time it was signed, it looked pretty good. At the time Louis Erickson signed, he was coming off of a 30-goal season. So it, it, it is one of those things that you can't tell the future. But is this an argument against giving a franchise player... Eight years that goes into their mid-30s. Let me know what you guys think because I think it's a fascinating thing. Again, I'm not trying to throw Jamie Benn under the bus. He has been a, a, a captain for Dallas. He has been an absolute warrior for a very long time. But at the same time, there is that uncomfortable conversation to be had about his cap hit and his current level of, of production. Things get kind of dicey, don't they? Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comment section, like I said. Um about how how a team can can navigate around this or is ben gonna be just fine for the next five years he's gonna get back to this range because again i i don't think he can get back to this i don't think he's that same player i think when you play the game the way jamie ben has and you you're, you're leaving your heart on the ice every single night um that wears the body down a little bit quicker than some of the finesse players i think that that play the way they do uh but let me know your thoughts don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, um, strange times indeed. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I will talk to you again soon.